Wow, it's been a, a crazy, insane, intense, hectic week. The, I, I suppose I've got uh, three different projects that I've been working on that I could tell you about. And, and these, you're not going to see anywhere. You're only going to know these if you're listening to what Jesse's been doing with his incredibly busy week. Uh, one of them. 365, watch, stand, pray, 365. In fact, <clears throat> I'm going to come over here and turn this on. Um, if I go to watch, here, we'll, we'll, we'll do it this way. I'm going to turn on my, we'll scale myself uh, down to size as, as Pastor always wanted to do. I, I'm making myself really, really little so that you can see me. I can so you see what's what's going on. Uh, we we if we go here. We go to watchstandpray.com. You can go to slash 365. Anyhow, this this book writing this is something I've been working. I that I could make this not here. I'm just gonna click on it. 365. The end. Oh, study book. It's there. You can get it. it's an awesome Bible study book. If you want to study Revelation, it's there. And I've already talked about this. 365. I've been working on this. And right now it's published up through about, oh, 140-something. And this week I wrote like an additional, like 20 or 30 of these things. And it's getting really, really, really close to being done, finished, completely done. And... It was so exhausting. I'm my my face is red, my eyes are red. I have a terrible headache because I've been slaving and slaving, and I've just been so exhausted. So this is this is one thing that I've 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 been able to get done. But look look, look, look at my you can see my you know I'm, you can tell I'm tired. All right, this is one thing I've gotten done. Here's another thing that I've been working on. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to you know, bring this down to size here. I'm going to do this. This is verb.inc. This is one of my little projects. Now, because I'm using Ubuntu here, or you've got, see my Chrome icon up here. Yes, you can, you can get Google Chrome and Ubuntu. It's there. You can, you can get all the, all the fun goodies, Thunderbird, Firefox. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I, 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 I almost forgot. Um, I am, I am so happy that, yeah, yeah, here, 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 here. get up, guy. I'm, see, this is, see, this is, I sit here in my little tiny world and I'm, I'm, get all excited about things. See this guy, Eric Deboy. Uh, we go in, what, what was it, uh, seven days ago? What did he do? Uh, updated icon, hold on. Eric, uh, de, de. one of these was mine. Updated, update to new icons. One, one of these, where was it? Where did it go? I, I am, I am so thrilled. I am so thrilled and happy. Um, th this guy uses his surfing icon thing. Oh, th there it was right there. Um, this guy had these icons. If, if, if I show you what the icon looks like, search here, L-M-M-S. That's my icon. I designed it. That's my artwork. Now, if you don't know what L-M-M-S is, and I'm thinking about doing a video on L-M-M-S. Oh, we don't need you. I'm thinking about doing a video on L-M-M-S. L-M-M-S. What is L-M-M-S? This is L-M-M-S. L-M-M-S is like music media editor software. Now you see our door here. Poor Eric is working so hard to try to get uh, all these, all these icons that are involved on my desktop and everything I do. These are kind of clean, flat looking icons. That That's from Eric. Other people make them. Maybe Eric compiles them and brings them together. This guy works so hard. But on his desktop, his LMMS icon was getting mixed up with our door. So if you went to open up 
uh, let's see, Ardor icon. Let's, let's see what that looks there. It was, it was kind of like this. One of these icons was showing up instead of the LMMS icon. So I went and made my own. I know you're so proud of me. If I go to uh, ink verb, which is my ink verb project here that we're working on here, and you scroll down and if you find the different, uh, different uh, repos, there. Oh, there was the surfing one that I I forked over, and then and he accepted. Uh, do, do, we, do we have icons? Oh, where is it? Oh, icons. Here we go. Icons. Icons that I made. There it is. LMS. SVG, there it is. I made it. It's right there. So I went and created this flat LMMS icon, and I explained to him what the problem was. He couldn't see it on his computer. And this was like long ago. We're, we're talking maybe February. And I had pestered him about it before, and, and he said, well, I don't see our problem. And I hadn't explained myself very well, and I hadn't really offered any... I, I hadn't made this yet. And... He just, you know, closed my ticket and didn't make his own. And so I made my own. And I made the request. And months later, last week, Eric, I love you. Thank you so much for making life better for all of us. Um, you know, this is cooperation. It was in, this is what open source is. And, and I'm not a normal, I'm not a trained developer. I studied Bible in college. I, I translate books of the Bible. And, he, well, one book, you know, Revelation. Okay, but. Still, so uh, you know, I anybody can cooperate and work together, and and so in you know, like open sources. If you see a problem, use your talents and resources, suggest the solution. You no, no, no more of this calling on the phone. I want this. I want to see this. Can't you guys do that? Just write your solution. Write the software to solve your problem, and go suggest. Here, here's a way to fix it, and people will see it. They can accept it as it is. They can make modifications, but built on all the work you've done. That's how, that's how to get the world to be a better and better and better place. You know, a lot of people talk about uh, making money. I mean, it doesn't matter if everybody's making ten thousand dollars an hour if uh, a bottle of Coca-Cola costs uh, ten thousand dollars. You know, you know. You, Money is relative. What matters in life is, uh, in, in terms of economic lifestyle, is the uh, the you say lifestyle, uh, the standard of living, and and where people are able to easily and comfortably stay at the standard of living. In theory, if there wasn't really much money in the world, but everyone was just cooperatively sharing stuff with each other, no one telling them to, people just voluntarily doing it, the quality of life could be awesome. I mean, if, if you had your home and your garden out back and, and you had the, the, the machines and tools and whatever to just automatically grow so many wonderful pieces of food, and you had your little hobbies and pet projects, shared them with the world. Everybody shared their pet projects and hobbies with each other. Uh, quality of life would go up. And that's what Linux is. And Google makes billions of dollars from it. And the U.S. government uses Linux. So I, it's like this is not some weird thing. You know, I, I'm not talking about communism. I'm, I'm talking about trying to go to a cashless society. I'm not talking talking about trying to eliminate uh, currency of, of any form or another, you know, cryptocurrency, whatever, Federal Reserve notes. You know, we need money. We need jobs. We need people to work. We need a free market. It's just, this is not forced. Everybody sharing with each other as, as one of many contributions to the overall quality of life, just open source, we share stuff, we don't do this copyright nonsense, I own the copyright, but I freely share it with everybody. Like that, that is what helps lift society overall. And the, the secret is it can't be forced. That failed when it's forced, such as with the pilgrims or with communist states. The problem with everybody sharing stuff freely where we all work together, 
the, the problem with that is when it's achieved through government. It doesn't work. People share with society in a way that lifts up everybody when we do it from the goodness of our hearts, not being told. So, uh, you know, this, this is open source and I, I don't advocate that we all wear flowers and beads and, and, you know, sit around and, and sing really bad quality songs in coffee shops. I'm, I'm not, I'm not for that. I'm not, you know, Richard Stallman created GNU and Linux was built on GNU and maybe he might like to go for that. And so does Waz. Maybe, I don't know. Wonderful, great people from old. I, I don't go far left, but I love capitalism. The, when, when you don't have to be born into the right family, if, if, if you can earn it and make it work, go for it. I don't like corporate, corporate capitalism. I don't like aristocracy. I like individual capitalism, individualism. If you've got an idea and you want to work for it, go. Nobody can tell you not to. That's capitalism. Go do your research. Don't, don't believe a false definition of that word. Defend the word. I, I firmly believe in that. In the process, I believe in open source, not niggling and fighting like dogs over a bone with so many intellectual property disputes. None of the business strategies I use depend on intellectual property except for trademarks. My name is me. You cannot misuse my name and misrepresent. That's the only thing that I'm, I'm big into. So, which is, I mean, it's kind of a normal thing. So I'm really, really excited uh, that, that this got adapted. I'm just, I'm so happy. I'm just, I'm just thrilled. I mean, this is great. You get your first pull request. Actually, I've had other pull requests uh, accepted before. The only one who really rejected a pull request was, was own cloud. I like, I like, I fixed their problem kind of because they had this ongoing problem and, and the guy, my paraphrase, my rephrase of what he said was basically, idiot, we wanted it to be broken like that. And then like, wouldn't let me fix his problem. And so the problem persisted and I'm over with Nextcloud instead of OwnCloud now. A lot, there are a lot of people. And we can do that because it's open source. All right. I'm thrilled about this. That happened this week. No, I, I don't know if you really get how this worked, but this icon wasn't, some guy made icons for the desktop and they're really great because they're simple. And this guy, it was broken and I made a suggestion several months ago and he finally accepted it and is using my icon. So I'm really happy. Eric Duboy, I love you. Now, uh, back here to verb.inc. This, this is verb.inc and this does Linux stuff. This does, in fact, all these icons I have here, this desktop roll-up I'm dealing with, watch me, let me press F12. See that? That right there is my, uh, my, uh, my computer terminal. Don't, don't look at that. You can, but it's not important. All this you can get easily by running this, these Linux commands right here. You go to the YouTube channel, learn how to install Ubuntu yourself. I, I do this for people and I'm, I'm moving forward. What's this? GNU manipulation program? What's, how, how do you get there? Uh, wh wh why, why is the, huh? Oh, okay. It, it, it did. <sighs> you know, sometimes my Windows computer here just doesn't want to cooperate well with Ubuntu. Okay, so I press F12, I press Alt, and then I left click like normal. I can drag this from anywhere because I'm using Ubuntu and it works like that. Okay, so here I am at verb.inc and I click on this little green green nib over here. This is about Ubuntu. This is my get the GitHub profile. We were just looking at that YouTube channel. Learn. Oh, this is, I have, have I showed you this? Let's, let's have a look. We have a look at this. It's going to start playing the video. Um, oh, 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 it's, it's my own channel. So, uh, we did have, uh, this, this video, it'll start to play explains all great YouTube channel. Excellent. It's the greatest channel. It's a huge, it's the best YouTube channel ever was. And it explains, uh, follow this one, install Ubuntu. If you're Chinese or you speak Chinese, uh, install Ubuntu, if you know English. So there it is. Great YouTube channel. Get how we were just on. What is Ubuntu? What am I doing with that? Click here. I'm finalizing this. I'm finishing it. 
this is the way to learn Linux. And and here's here's what this is gonna be. This isn't done yet. I'm I'm almost done with Shell 301. I've got to I've got to work on lesson six and lesson twelve a little bit, and then go back and tweak the whole thing. But 101 and 201 are basically done. These will be videos where you can watch. I won't be on the screen. Uh, I'll I'll be off of this screen, but I'll be talking and I'll be looking at this environment. People ask me what my Linux programming environment is. Is it, it not Linux? What, what's your Jesse? What 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 IDE do you use? What programming environment do you use when you're writing software? I say Linux. I've got my web browser here. I actually have another, I have like a screen there I'm looking at. And then when I turn, I see this behind me when I'm, I'm, that's, I'm looking at what you're looking at behind me. Like that's, so I've got, this is my environment where I develop stuff. I have my text editor here. I can see my files right there and, and I've got my terminal and, and the way this is going to work. I'm so excited about this. Oh, by the way, I just right click in the middle of the window, pressing alt, right click in the middle of the window, just slide it right over like that. So easy. I don't have to find the microscopic one, two pixel corner edge to try to get it. I can hurry up, right click, slide over, do my work, make stuff go where it's supposed to. Very, very wonderful. I've got uh, this, what's it, what's it called? Is it called screen key? See, I can press the window key and type screen key and I can click on it and I can run screen key. It's a, it's a thing that I can run. It's like a program. I'll show you in a minute, but uh, I, I can press Windows search for it or, and that's the name of it, screen key, or from the terminal. Now I can open the terminal with F12 or I can press control alt T for terminal. Boom. Same thing. And, and, and I can, I can run screen key this way. I can just type screen key and now screen key. Look at that. Now screen key is running. What's screen key? Ooh, what is screen key? It puts what I type on the screen. Isn't that great? Isn't that nifty? Let's go to preferences. I want raw. I want the delay to be 1.5 seconds. Uh, remind me not to type any of my passwords while this thing's turned on. And I'm going to put it right in the center there. So I can type hello, Dolly, Ooh, uh, Dolly, hello, Dolly. And, and, and so screen key shows what I'm typing. So when I want to move this, press alt and I click. Oh, it doesn't show my click. It's got to be the keyword. I, if I, if I do, uh, if I do alt control T, well, it'll show that on the screen. Oh, look what happened behind my terminal. So this is my little environment that I work in. And what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to go through Linux shell 101. I'm going to skip lesson zero and go right to lesson one. See, I'm going to go right to lesson one. And I'm, I'm going to be teaching Linux, but I'm, I'm going to go here and I'm, I'm going to have my terminal and I'm going to have the, the command codes here and copy it. And then we're going to paste it with control shift V and, and we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to teach Linux. I'm going to explain it. I'm happy. I'm looking forward to this. There will be a series of videos where you can just sit and watch and you'll see examples. It'll make sense. It'll have Jesse sensible teaching. I'm not going to be talking inside of a cave. People record Linux teaching videos in a cave. I'm not going to have the, the whole Linux terminal like this where I'm talking about stuff, but you can't see what's going on. And yes, the terminal is a little transparent. That's the cool. That's one cool thing about Linux. So I'm, I'm going to be uh, explaining this Jesse style. Now, before I uh, go on uh, much more here, <clears throat> I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm talking long. I'm rambling and babbling. And that's how I can come across when I'm really, 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 really tired. All right. So I, what have I, I have, oh, yeah, yes. I have to explain this. Something else going on. 
guys, I was talking with our, our buddies, our, our, our people we're working with here in Taiwan. I'm going to open up this shirt. We're just, we're doing a soft launch with guys. We're, we're slowly taking off. You can buy one of these t-shirts as an American for 120 US dollars. You say, why would you buy a shirt for 120 US dollars? Well, there's only going to be at most 35 of these ever made. Videos explain it, but you know, you get what the shirt is. It's a really nice stretch cotton, really, really nice. It's hard, it's hard to get it to show up here because it, it's getting washed out in the light. But what we're going to do, we're, we're looking at, at a couple things this week. I'm going to take this logo here and above it, we're going to print a number, maybe like zero, 01. And each shirt of these $3,520 shirts is going to get a unique number. The first one we sell is going to have the number one on it. The second one's going to have a number two. And this is part of, of Get Start. These are the first shirts, the first clothes we're selling. This brand is going to go places because I'm running it. And I know how to make stuff solid and stable. We're, we're doing design manufacturing stuff, U.S. and Taiwan. I don't know if you know about Taiwan or if you live under a rock, but Taiwan is the solution to the problem between the U.S. and China. Taiwan can solve that problem. Focusing on Taiwan, dealing with Taiwan, we'll see the problem, we'll find the problem, solve the problem. Taiwan is... The best way, a strong, happy Taiwan, a good relationship between the U Taiwan and the U.S. is the way to have peace between the U.S. and China if it's done correctly. Taiwan's very important. We're not talking about outsourcing jobs to China. Taiwan and Vietnam need American business where we can. Not, not, uh, listen, we don't take business out of America and send it to Taiwan and Vietnam. We don't do that. We start a business that might use infrastructure that our important friends, Taiwan and Vietnam, have, or, or we take manufacturing from someplace else and move that to Taiwan and Vietnam or home to the United States. Now, now I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of manufacture it in the country where you're selling it. I'm a big fan of that. If you've got something at home, manufactured at home, Taiwan would be manufacturing maybe in the Asia, the region of Asia. If we ever move to Vietnamese manufacturing, then, uh, you know, made in Taiwan will be sold in Taiwan. Made in Vietnam will be sold in Vietnam. And made in USA will be sold in USA. Pacific Ocean is a big place to ship stuff across. So make it locally in the country where it's being sold. I mean, that's, I, I like that. Um, all right. Well, you, you know, it, as far as royalties, you know, foreign companies, um, foreign companies are kind of fancy. I, I don't, I, I think, I, I, I think, you know, f trade, free trade is a thing. I don't know. I kind of think that royalties, uh, could be taxable as tariffs. I would not mind paying royalties, uh, royalty tax tariffs. I wouldn't. I'm just, I'm just saying that. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that. I think that'd be great. People who it's, I mean, you know, in, in Chicago, when you want to get the good, rich, expensive, nice car, you know where you go? To the imports dealer. Because imports are cool, right? Well, okay. Well, in other countries, the American thing is the import. That's cool, right? It's worth importing. So make it more, a little bit more expensive, pay some tax to government, money's leaving your country. That should kind of go to your government a little bit, help them build more roads and bridges. All right. So, uh, guys is, I, what I'm thinking about doing, we're trying to work on getting t-shirts. This has a nice cute little lo label on the side, by the way, in case you, there's our guys logo on the side. We're working on getting quality guys t-shirts in the beginning that are less expensive, but, but really special. We're working on it. 
if this deal goes through, I'm going to double the price of this shirt. Right now, it's 120 US dollars for Americans. If you're in Taiwan, you know, if you want to get a $1,000 plane ticket, $700 plane ticket, uh, fly from San Francisco to Taipei, you're welcome to buy the shirt for about $20 less. But if you're in America and you want us to ship it to you, you're going to pay $20 more. Tough luck. Uh, this, because the, the prototypes are made in Taiwan. You know, it's, 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 it's not from cheapness. It's, it's where I am. I mean, look, America got so obsessed with being consumers and, and, and what they like. And I like this. I want my stuff perfect. You don't have chicken nuggets. I'm calling 911. Like, we were so into being pampered as consumers. Manufacturing left. And, and, and we, don't, we don't think about manufacturing anymore. We don't get manufacturing. We don't, like, we don't get it. Just today, I was driving down the road in this, this little utility truck. They're all over Asia. It's, it's like a, it's like a, you know, those, those flat nose semis. Okay. Take that and make it so that the bed is the size of an S10, the little baby pickup truck. But, but the cab is like a flat nose semi. It's a little utility truck. It's a two seater. Those trucks are all over Asia. In America, you can buy them. I, I, I drove around uh, Spring Hill with, with the guy, uh, uh, um, what was his name? Perry. Perry, awesome guy. Very, very, there, there, there are two Perry families at Spring Hill. We, I mean, it, I think it was called a Tiger truck. I think it was made in China or something like that. It, it, it's like you couldn't get them in America because they don't have it. Wonderful little tiny small utility vehicle for like running around your property to fix everything you need. Those are all over Asia transporting most of the stuff that we buy. Little tiny trucks all over the place. And they come in a slightly larger size also, like pickup trucks. And, and they come in super big size, that large flatbed. And then you make them bigger than that, you're, the cab is a semi. So it's a toned down semi cab. One of these trucks, they're all over the place. And they're annoying. Pulls out in front of me today. And it's going really, really, really slow. And I'm like, since when? I'm like, you little trucks are supposed to be dangerous. Why are you driving slow? I wasn't really upset, but I was wondering. And he, he, he pulls out in front of me, turns, and I see that he's, he, his whole back bed is loaded with 50-gallon drums, like oil drums. And I, I really wasn't bothered by the fact that this guy dangerously pulled out in front of me and went really slow and, 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 and was... Because, see, he was turning down a road in a small industrial park with lots of factories. And America doesn't really have many factories like that anymore. But see, what he did was normal because in Asia, manufacturing is, is bread and butter. It's, it's life, it's security, it's, it's why we have a house. So a lot of things in Asia are kind of unfinished Kids are not afraid to go over to the breaker box to turn on the TV. And, and that, they're used to that because it's a manufacturing society. They're, they, they get the idea of things being made and in process and in, in process, in progress, however that works. I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired. I can't. In progress. Okay. Uh, you go to the store, you, you, you buy the, the, the lid for your pot over here, you, you choose the lid for your pot, and then you choose the handle over there. And you can like mix and match and assemble them at home. And that, that's no problem, because half the moms and dads out there work on an assembly line. And probably one in ten of those are putting these pots and lid handles together anyway for us Americans who think that everything's supposed to come already packaged and you know, give me everything and treat me like a, a, a king and queen and princess and prince. And over in Asia, some guy pulling out, stopping traffic so he can take oil where he's going, whatever's in his 50-gallon drum, maybe screws. Maybe it's just a screw factory. Or foundry. Do you have a screw foundry? We're working with metal. I don't know. I'm American. We don't know about manufacturing anymore. We used to. But the country that does the manufacturing is going to be the next superpower. That's how it works. 
The Trump wants to bring jobs. To, he wants to bring manufacturing, understanding, not being a prissy prissy and, and knowing how stuff is made. Trump wants more of that in America. I, I, I think that's a great thing. This guy pulls out in front of me. Well, in a manufacturing society, that's team, man. Right by industrial park. Yeah, bravo, I'll stop for you. You keep our economy going so I can eat. Yay. And people in Asia understand that because they actually make stuff. So, uh, I've, I've, I've got this stash of fabric. And when I have my little Jesse ideas, I, I get on the phone and I go to the, to the designers up the street because they're all over. I, if, if I want to know where to make this stuff. I go to some factory up the street because they're all over. Because they, well, they don't, hate, consumers don't want to pay such cheap prices all the time and be pampered all the time that they want to outsource their own manufacturing jobs. They'll pay a little bit more and have it made in their own country. They love that idea. Love and wonderful idea. Company downsizes job, sends it overseas to you know, separate the stock value a little bit. They don't go for that. That, that, that game doesn't work. So I've got lots of factories I can go to just up the street and find something. I'd love it if in America I could do that. I'd love it. But Americans with their penny pincher, coupon clipper, I want a stock company that gives me a 200% return on my money the same afternoon. Okay, well, then lose your jobs. That's the way that, that's how that's done. Enron, fake, phony. That's not realistic. That's how that's done. So... We don't have that in America, but over here in Asia where life is real and strong, I can walk down the street and I can see the factory that I need. I pray for that to come home to America. I pray for it too. That's why I'm starting a company. I hope to have a factory to make these shirts in America. But in the meanwhile, um, this shirt, $120, we're going to add a number one, two, three, whatever numbers made. It's going to be zero, one, zero, two is going to be in single digits. I mean, you know what? Maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do single digit. I'll tell you what, whoever orders the first one, you can decide if it's going to be one or zero one, and it's going to be set for that hereafter. However, this goes down. If we can get this other little deal to bring good quality shirts while we're still getting started, I'm going to double the price. And this shirt using my little roll of very limited sample fabric. You can get an original shirt in my sample fabric, the same used in a lot of our promo videos uh, and, and advertisements and, and photography type stuff and sponsorship. Like this shirt belongs to uh, a skateboarder and I need to go deliver that to him uh, very soon actually. That fabric, these shirts, only 35 of them. And after we get our little deal that goes through, I'm going to double the price of it. It's going to be, it's going to be 240 us dollars to get this limited edition. That's how I'm going to start support manufacturing in good countries, support the brand that wants to have it made in America. If the profits go to an American company. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about that. You know, what do you, how do you like, how do you like my thinking? How do you like my thinking? How do you like my thinking? I, I think it's a great idea because we need to get the capital, get the company started. I'm not interested in doing Kickstarter nonsense. It's a great, it, it, it's simple deal. Buy a great, expensive, valuable product, a, a collector's item, a keepsake. Buy it. The company gets started. You've got your stuff. No need for Kickstarter to verify that the crowdfunding is going to go to where it needs to get the MOQ. Not going to do that. You've got your shirt. And I'm going to throw in 25% discount for life on everything else. I think that's about right. Cheerio.